Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Nathan. Most of you already know me, but um, tonight um, is is my week to do the elder blip. And um, this last week or so, I've been doing a, a morning Bible study with with my wife, Krista, and um, it's called the End of Me. And I wanted to just read the one that really has stood out to me the most in this last week and, and what it has meant to me. And what it says is it says, authentic to be accepted. And I think about the masks we have to wear everywhere we go now and the metaphor of wearing a mask around all the time and how we're not true with each other and authentic with each other. And sometimes that's why we don't feel accepted. That's why we don't feel like we have true relationships with others. It says, we as humans struggle with authenticity because we fear rejection. We want the world to see us at our very best because then people are more likely to accept and possibly even admire us. Maybe we don't need to try so hard or hide any of our blemishes. Maybe people will like us just the way we are. It's even possible they'll be more drawn to us if they know some of our failings and struggles. They could say, I'm like that too. I have the same issues. I'm glad to know there are two of us, but there's a risk we won't take. Fear is the enemy of transparency. We don't like our flaws and we don't expect everybody else to. So we work hard to put up the most impressive front we can. Pure in heart, that's something to think about, isn't it? It means you're living the blessed life. When you stop worrying about the signs and the extravagant advertising and all the effort expand, expended in trying to convince people you're something different than you are. When the inside and outside match up, you're pure in heart and you're where he wants you to be. Getting to the end of me means I'm not so worried about performing for others anymore. Getting to the end of me means I'm no longer interested in faking it because I understand that God is looking for the real me. When we bow to give thanks in a restaurant, how unmixed and sincere are our hearts? Are we thinking entirely about God and his provision of the meal? Or is there some part of us thinking about how we appear to others? When we raise our hands to volunteer for a project at church, how much of the heart is allocated to pleasing God and how much is concerned with who is watching and how impressed they may be. Do we wonder who's watching as the offering plate goes by? When we stand to pray publicly, are the words geared to God's ear or to the listening? Coming to the end of me means I'm through with seeking the applause or attention of men and the emptiness it produces. Instead, I seek only to please God I receive my reward from him instead of from people. When we close the public theater, drop the curtains, shut off the lights, and play to an audience of one, not caring about the reviews of the critics or anyone else, that's when we come to the end of ourselves and experience God's blessing. And this little devotional really hit home to me um, this past week because I feel that in my own life, I'm constantly worried about the perceptions of others. I'm worried about the perceptions of me as an employee at work. I'm worried about their perceptions of me as an elder in the church, as someone who stands up in front and leads worship at church. And my life should be perfect. I should have it all together. My kids should be perfect. My wife should be perfect. My house should be clean. Everything should be great in my life. And that's not true. That's not true of any of our lives. We all have warts and failures and struggles and anxieties and things that we deal with on a daily basis. And we tend to deal with them alone instead of in community because we're unwilling to let others see that part of us. We're unwilling to share those struggles, those self-doubts, those self-righteous actions that some of us have sometimes. Some of the things that just nag at us day in and day out and we go home each night thinking that we have to please others that we have to stand out in the crowd or something like that and that's the furthest thing from the truth we need to be honest with God and we need to be honest with our brothers and sisters in Christ if we want to have true fellowship with them 
We need to call sin, sin when it's sin, but then we need to forgive that sin and we need to help each other on this journey towards sanctification and righteousness. And there's a few Bible verses here I wanna bring up um, that go along with this, this devotion. There's Matthew chapter five, verse eight. It says, blessed are those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. When our motives and our actions and our inner being are the same, we have that pure heart. And that's when we get to see God and we get to feel his direction in our lives. And then we have Matthew chapter six, verse one, it says, watch out, don't let your good deeds be publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your father in heaven. How often do I do things so that others will notice what I'm doing? Do I do them because I'm just an elder? right? I'm an elder. I should do this. I'm an elder. I should show up to this. I should show up to that. I need to be at this. I need to be at that. People tell me, hey, you're an elder. You should be doing all of these things. Guess what? It's not about that. It's about doing what the Father has called me to do, not what other people have called me to do. Matthew chapter 6 again, starting in verse 5. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. This isn't saying that we shouldn't have corporate prayer and worship or that we shouldn't pray to God publicly at a restaurant or whatever. This is about a heart condition. What are we seeking? Are we seeking the approval of man? Are we speaking to tickle the ears of the listener? Or are we speaking to our heavenly father? Are we speaking to God himself? And that's who we're interested in. That's who we're interested in telling the story. And that's who we're interested in hearing from. And one more here. Um, Matthew 23, verse 5. Everything they do is for show. On their arms they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside. And they wear robes with extra long tassels. Do we clothe ourselves in a way that leads to the glorification of our Heavenly Father? I was listening to a podcast this week, a very interesting podcast. It's called Cooper Stuff. And he mentioned something that I thought was really interesting um, in a way where it says, God doesn't necessarily care what our hopes and dreams are. His, his purpose for us is to glorify him, not to glorify us. And so often we think, that God is there to serve us, that he's some kind of genie to glorify our hopes and our dreams. And he wants us to have everything we've ever wanted or blah, 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 blah. And that's the furthest thing from biblical truth. He wants us to glorify him so that more can come to know Jesus Christ. In order for us to do that, we have to humble ourselves. We have to be authentic with who we are. We have to let people know that we're broken, that we're sinners, and that we're in need of God's grace just as they are. And that we can enter into a relationship with each other and hold each other accountable and help each other on this great Christian journey that we get to do together as a family. Thanks for listening. I hope this blessed some of you in some way.